Tuesday, November the 10th. Now imagine being eight years old. Eight years old and having a grandfather with a title like this. The Reverend Canon Professor, BA, BD, MA, D Theology, DHL, DD. How about that? Well, I came across a book of conversations between an eight-year-old I'm going to call Sarah, mainly because I've no idea how to pronounce her real name, and her grandfather, whom she calls Poppy. Imagine the questions you could ask. Imagine the conversations about God. Imagine the answers to ponder on. Well, we're going to look at one conversation right now. Poppy. Okay. Our Father. Sarah. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What does that mean? Does it mean thy name is worshipped? It means holy be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Now what does that mean? Does it mean sort of like your kingdom in heaven? That's part of it. But there's a more important other part. It goes way back into the Old Testament. God promises that his kingdom would come not just in heaven, but that the whole universe would get to be exactly as God wanted it to be. OK, so thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You want your will to be done? Those three petitions more or less mean the same thing. So that what happens on earth could be like it is in heaven. And then what happens, that will be the kingdom of God. Sarah says, sure. And then God's name will be hallowed, says Poppy. Sarah, give us this day our daily bread. That's a different kind of petition. Yes, our daily bread would be Jesus' body. You think it's the Lord's Supper. It could be. It could be. Yes, it probably isn't, but there are lots of scholars who have thought that it might be. Do you know why? Because the word that we translate daily in Greek is epiusion. And nobody actually knows what it means. Daily bread is just a guess. And another guess is special bread. We don't know which of those two it is. Our regular daily bread, breakfast, dinner and supper. Or the special bread of the Lord's Supper. I think it's the Lord's Supper because, well... Except, do you think Jesus could know? When did he teach this prayer? Did he teach it at the Lord's Supper? No. How would he have known that he was to be crucified? Well, he was a prophet. And that's one thing that prophets do. All right, it could be that... And then there's forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's actually not true. Well, you don't always forgive people. Do you think you'll get forgiven if you don't forgive? Maybe. That's risking it. See, if they don't know that you don't forgive them, the point is not that if I don't forgive you, you won't forgive me. The point is that if I don't forgive you, God won't forgive me. See, the prayer is to God. Forgive us our sins as we forgive other people. I forgive lots of things, but I don't forgive every single thing. Well, you should. 
it's very dangerous, not just with God, but with ourselves. Sins against us that we don't forgive sit in our souls and just sort of rot there. I forgive most things. It's only one or two things. What are the one or two things you don't? I can't say it, but you know what I mean. You have to forgive that too. I have a very hard time doing it, but I have to try. Yes, you have to try. And so do you. Wouldn't you love to have a grandfather like that? Maybe you do. Wouldn't you have loved to have been an eight-year-old that asked those kind of questions and had that kind of conversation? What a family. But what made me choose that particular passage? And it's an entire book, so maybe we'll visit Sarah and Poppy again. Is that thought of God's kingdom and the thought of those phrases in the Lord's Prayer, especially, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The Lord's Prayer is one of those prayers that brings comfort to people, is used because it's so well known, because wherever you say it, someone somewhere will be able to join in. But what if we didn't just recite it? What if it didn't trip off the tongue, but we actually thought about each phrase? What if we lived each phrase? What difference would it make to our lives, our faith, and to the world around us? You see, those two phrases are so connected. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Done. Thy kingdom come as thy will is done. And that brings the kingdom of God into fruition on earth as well as in heaven. In other words, every time you do a good deed in Jesus' name. Every time you reach out and witness for Jesus, every time you choose not to say an unkind word, every time you choose not to lose your temper, every time you perform a random act of kindness for a neighbour and your motives are to be like Jesus... Every time you do what is the will of God, however hard it might be, especially the not doing, the not saying what's on the tip of your tongue, the not losing your temper, the not getting frustrated, the pushing through the difficult circumstances. Every time you can do the will of God and choose not to do, what's against the will of God, you bring a slice of the kingdom of God into life. You plant a seed that can grow. You give a glimpse of what God's life could be like and is like when we hand our lives over to him. They may only be moments, but they are seeds and they are seeds that can grow. So, how much of God's kingdom will you breathe into life this week? And as we sit in this time between Remembrance Sunday and Armistice Day tomorrow, those two periods of silence when we remember all those that have sacrificed for us. It's not a bad thought for the day. Let's make the kingdom of God 
real. Let's show a different way of living. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.